Cheers, you don't ask too much for me, I've done my leg, right? A uh, terrible thing, I was out dancing with Louise Maternal, right? I was, uh, <laughs> I was dancing like that and I've, I've made the terrible mistake of demonstrating me shimmy that I do, which is like, I move over there and then pull up like that and I've done, <laughs> I've done all my tendons and like, allied to me cruciate ligament injury, which uh, got me out of Premier League football in that tragic accident a couple of years ago. And it's, uh, I'll, I'll hobble down these stairs, ah, ah, that's all right, I feel fine now. Um, <laughs> I've got a bit of sympathy and I'm great. Look at this, right? You won't believe what this mi microwave can do. Because you know your microwaves. I've told you what this is, haven't I? I I'm, I'm not going to bother telling you how much it costs because you wouldn't believe me, right? You'd think, what was that? how much his microwave cost? Or is that his phone number, right? <laughs> but here's something you can do, right? Look, picture there, my very, very great friend, a very talented TV performer, Julian Clary, there. There is, you get that. And you get this, just perfectly simple thing, just a bottle of water. That's all it is. It's a bottle of water. Now, that's the kind of thing, you know you people, you just open the tap and drink it like that, for nothing. <laughs> what mugs you are, I'll pay like two quid and get it out of a bottle. <laughs> right, but you get those two things, right, and you put them in there, There's, in goes Julian, in goes the water, and then you press the buttons, two, 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 one, seven, 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 nine, start. Bing! And look at that, you do all your washing up with that nice bottle of fairy liquid. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Right, what have I got in here? What have I got in the cupboards? I ain't cleaning me cupboards. Oh, these are nice. Look, look, if you've got any children, come around, Jess. Hey, kiddies, come around. Have a sweetie with your Uncle Bob. There you go, and I'll give them that. A nice cola cube. A little cube there, and it tastes of, of cola. Thus, cola cubes. That's lovely. I'll give them that. Any Welsh kids come around, don't I? Just give them some of that. They'll be all right with that, that. <laughs> Probably the, probably the nearest they ever get to meat in their diet anyway, really. <laughs> and uh, here, there's another thing. This is fantastic stuff. I don't know if you've come across this. Dog deodorant. Now, this is, no, this is wonderful stuff because if you spray it on in the morning, you smell like a dog. Which is fantastic. <laughs> um, what have I got here? Oh, yeah, this is a new film I'm making. Doing a remake of the uh, Seven Year Itch, eh? With me and uh, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> a bit of a problem with contracts because I found out she's dead. But they'll work it out one way or another, don't you worry about that. And this book, this fantastic book. Now, this is a book, it's about, it's about London, but it's about those parts of London that have kind of become lost. The magical little things that you find down muses, down muses and up alleyways and things, and it's called The London Nobody Knows. There you go. And I, I've, I've written another, I wrote this, and then I've written another one about uh, the capital of Wales, which is called The Cardiff That No One Gives a Toss About. <laughs> And this, what's this doing here? I told him to clean this away, actually. I don't really want anyone to see. This is a book, uh, Danny Minogue. I had a little contretemps, as it were, with uh, Danny Minogue. And we went out and had a meal and then stayed overnight around my house. Uh, and I'd had a couple of lagers and, and perhaps didn't perform much my usual potential. And she sent me this book here, look. <laughs> yeah, I guess in Australia that passes as humour, does it? Anyway, uh, I've got a few things to do, uh, so I'll stick around for a minute. I'm very lucky to find me in, obviously, because normally this time of night I'd be out and about. It's this uh, really weird group of kids living around here, right? And they're dead against, right? I mean, really violently opposed, to the point where sometimes they go down Thames Television, right, with Uzi machine guns and things. They act like Brownlow and Reg Ollins and uh, PC Quinnan and Marquita uh, and all those, right? I hate any of them, right? So they and they want them. They want them got rid of. So they've started this. Look, this, this organisation. Look, kill the bird. <laughs> it's not a bad program myself, but if that's how they feel about it, they're entitled to their opinions, aren't they? <laughs> I tell you what, I might do. I might buy one of them pro shatsu massages you get in QVC. Get one of them, and just because I think if I put that under the ligament or some heat treatment, that that sort it out. <clears throat> Or a big stretch bandage. Um, I'll tell you what I will do though, I've got to show you this program. Here we go, it's a TV program that I made, I won't tell you anything about it. You tell me, what subject do you think this man is discussing? Well, I'd been doing it with humans for quite a long time, or thought I had, and then suddenly I found that I didn't get as much resistance from animals, and I used to sort of sit and an animal would come up to me and I'd think, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Is the jacket a clue? <laughs> and how often should you keep trying that? Try one thing until you're successful with that and then build up to another. Maybe one a week. 
<laughs> Stuffed penguin, a clue at all? Or, or dozens of cats putting balls on their noses or something. What would you say to people who, who may watch this show, not particular animal lovers, and say it's all a load of rubbish, doesn't know what it's on about, what would you say to that? Well, they might be right, but I'd look at your pets if I were you. I'd look very closely at them and I'd see how they respond to you, and particularly how they respond to other people too. Mmm, because they might be having an affair. <laughs> now, what is this about? In fact, it's not at all about uh, what you're thinking. This man is, would you believe, a pet psychic. This man can delve into your... It's called Psychic Pets, right? And the one thing I love about this program, A, it's, it cares about animals, and yet this woman has killed a zebra to make her pants, right? <laughs> uh, but the one thing I loved about it more than anything, the thing I was proudest of, was the, the opening titles, right? Which I did. I did these opening titles when I was ill, right? I had a very, very bad case of food poisoning, and yet I still managed to drag myself into the studio and cut the opening titles. Unfortunately, I was suffering with flatulence, and... If, and just at the end, I couldn't hold back any longer, unfortunately. But I, I still think they're good. <laughs> it happened, all right? I'm sorry. Sorry about it. Let's, uh, let's see a little bit more of the show, anyway. Right, on with the show. Let's go to the phone lines. And hello to Doreen. Hello. Hello. Right, now you have a four-year-old cat called Bozzy, named after Bosnia, yes. who you found abandoned in a dustbin. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it was in a bit of a state, so you called it Bozzy after Bosnia. Uh, and you've got the other cat, of course, that you found very hungry called Ethy. <laughs> Doreen, is he a Siamese cat? No, he's a Devon Blue Rex. A Devon Blue Rex? Ah, oh, they are fantastic. They are the tastiest cats in the world, right? No, all right, I know some people don't agree with eating cats, but if you go to certain parts of... <laughs> no, you go to certain parts of the East and there's standard bill of fare on any menu. And those Devon Blue Rexes are gorgeous. They've got a slightly tangy taste. And you have to have them with a, with a light wine, a light white Riesling or something like that, but they are brilliant. Right. I've never heard of that, that breed. Do you know anything about them? Uh, the only thing we know is that they're bred from a mutation and they're virtually hairless. Right. Do you know anything yes, about they're these? very sensitive. They often look quite bald. The ears particularly look quite bald. Um, they're an acquired taste. Some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're a little bit tangy. Love them. This is this is my favourite bit of the show. Actually, uh, just coming up out there, they're introducing uh, the guests in the studio. I don't think you should comment basically on on you know people's physical attributes. <laughs> Now, our guest in the studio is Monster. <laughs> yes, but what about her cat? That's all we really care about. <laughs> Here's a, while, we're on the, uh, while we're on the subject of animals, uh, there's another programme that I want to show you. This is, uh, this is another one of those ones where I go out with the police, right? Uh, to be honest, they're a bit of a nuisance, them programmes, but the police are on at me all the time. Oh, Bob, the lads feel a little bit more, you know, a little less nervous when they know you're in the car with them. You know, so I went out, and in this case I went out with uh, one of the lady uh, police officers who, who was, was attached to the, the animal side of things. Back on patrol, another call for help comes through. This time to root out a man believed to be hiding in a loft. No negative. Um, on the way to, is it Christie Avenue off of First Avenue? Ousting a suspect from a loft isn't a task she and Major have encountered during training. But there's a first time for everything. You might want to watch out on this. This is this is a woman I only ever worked with on this program. Rather, rather sarcastic feminist doing the voiceover. After a brief pep talk from Leslie, Major is suitably psyched up and ready for the job. Several burly police officers are already in the house. So far, none has felt the need to risk life and limb by confronting the suspect in the loft. They'd rather Leslie and Major did that. <laughs> they are simply following correct police procedures, all right? Article 4, Statement 6 of the police code is don't put yourself in danger if there's a bird coming, let her take the flak instead. <laughs> Everybody knows that. 
Um, my wife is a he's over at that end of the lock where he hides um, in the past. Can you have yes, we, we have called him and he doesn't want to come down. So could you put your dog up and see if you can get him down for us, please? Right, they're going to put the dog up, but uh, as someone like myself who's trained at Hendon Police College knows, before you send the dog into a situation like that, you have to give one more verbal warning. Uh, but this mustn't be done by a police officer. You must get Wayne Etta Slob from the Harry Andrews <laughs> show to, to issue this verbal warning. Uh, <laughs> Last seen falling down the stairs. Lock it, yeah. Thanks, mate. What's his name? Sean. Sean. Sean! Sean, can you hear me? You're going to come down now before I send the dog in there? Come down now! Oh, I'm having a thing! <laughs> so anyway, they've warned Sean, Wayne has warned Sean, and he hasn't come down. Sean's now in more trouble than he could possibly dream of, because Sean they're going to send the dog up, mate. So, whoa, you better be prepared for big, big difficulties in your life, boy. You're going to wish you'd never embarked on a life of crime, you damn thrill seeker. So, do you got any weapons? I don't know. All right. Is he? You get up there first, Major, and I'll follow. Go on, Major, up you go. Yeah. Go on, Major. <laughs> <laughs> up, up, up the ladder, Mage. Mate, you go up and down the ramp and through the flaming hoops at Earl's door. <laughs> Just get up the ladder. Oh, God. <laughs> you better be careful, Sean, because the dog's coming. <laughs> It's from the bunk up from the end of the ring. <laughs> 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 Sean, it's too late to come down there because we've blocked the hole up with the dog, unfortunately. <laughs> There, boy, find him. Where are we? Coming up, another fantastic bit. <laughs> I'll leave you with this fantastic bit of sexist commentary again by the voiceover woman. Think. Good boy. Find him then. Find him. Good boy, what's it? <coughs> Good boy. All right, mate, out you come. Get out there. Get out there. Feeling more confident now the situation seems <laughs> under control, <laughs> the men follow Leslie up into the lobby. <laughs> I know, you see, uh, the, the, the modern playground is a very, very rich area for us uh, at Casualty. Uh, imagine this. Imagine a child uh, unsure of his size. Now, he comes up, he crawls through this, and you think, well, that's fine, I can fit through that. Uh, it breathes in a little bit, you see, and he's through this one. That's fine. But you see, when he gets to this, can you imagine the scenario here? Head goes through, fine, no problem, but then, uh, uh, then he's stuck, you see. So what you've got then is you've got the fire brigade have to come and cut him out. Uh, rush him to, to Holby General and uh, all sorts of post-traumatic shock and everything there. This is, this is perfect, this. Absolutely perfect. Because you, what you've got as a builder, maybe in part one you see him playing nice through, through here, uh, after the adverts he's through here. Uh, and I think you know at home, you'll know at home what's coming, that eventually he's going to be stuck. And can I just say this, uh, also with the modern playground, imagine a, imagine a scholar taking his O-levels, taking his A-levels, perhaps not done as well as he thought. Well, you see, you see, this is far too much of a temptation for him, isn't it? You see what I mean? It's a very, very dangerous thing, I think, to have in a playground. But then again, fantastic for us on casualty. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> a bit intricate, but it's something we're trying to bring into casualty now. Rather than people just falling over and grazing themselves. Picture this, if you will. Uh, as you can see there, all the, the pigeons now, we have to have those pigeons specially trained, obviously, by uh, some kind of pigeon trainer, I would imagine. And the pigeons line up. Now, imagine that defecating. I think I can use that word, defecating. Now, imagine a burglar. He goes up the drain pipe, 
gets onto the balcony, climbs over. Now, no harm done, of course. In he goes, does a bit of burglary, nothing serious. I don't think he needs to beat anybody senseless. Just take a television, a video, something like that. But, unbeknownst to him, on his hands, he's got the pigeon guava. Is it guava or guava? <laughs> well, whatever. He's got that in his hands. Now, say he then goes home. Now, say he makes himself a sandwich after he's burglar in. Hey? Then what's he going to get? Food poisoning, the E. coli vaccine, everything in, in his tummy, worms, horrible, horrible thing, rushed into hospital, intensive care. And that's the kind of thing, it's a kind of longer, wider plot that we're trying to bring into Kevin <laughs> Tickman. It worked very well. And all because of a few very innocent pigeons. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Well, you join me up here in my Hollywood corner. Da, 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 da. Well, my... It's not just uh, the film stars, it's not just the stars from the world of show business, music and sport uh, that send me things, but some rather tortured people, I have to say. And there's, there's a young lady who, who I saw uh, a couple of times. She was over in this country with her father. Her father was, was over here actually on, what I guess, what you would term sort of a state visit. Uh, I think he visited John Major for talks and then he went to see the Queen, a very important man in the United States of America. Uh, and she got... I have to say, a little bit infatuated by me. Uh, I think I was kind of the archetypal big daddy figure Englishman. And uh, when she went away, she's written to me, and bless her heart, she, she sent me this she sent me this hat with her name on it, uh, which, is, which is very lovely. I don't know if you can see that. that. <laughs> uh, and this as well, this isn't so much to give. They were round here, bless them. Uh, I had them round playing cards. It was one of my favourite show business couple. Uh, and they, and they, left, they left these behind. <laughs> Look, this is the... The, the crankies have been round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there. So I'll, I'll, what I must do is I must mail them back to them. That'd be nice. Oh, I'll give them to them when they come around to play West next Tuesday, I suppose. That's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Oh, where was I? Oh, remember that program I told you? That program that I made about the dog, right? So, got the dog in the loft, got hold of the guy, right? Sean captured him, dragged Sean off, right? End of problem. Major has made himself at home up in the rafters. <laughs> but how do you get a dog down from a loft? It's me. <laughs> I what I do, I do is leap off about the fifth step. Stat at leave. Right. Um, Can you Could you have the bloody camera crew here? I'd swear you down. If I sort of. The, uh, That's down. I just got hold of Major and, and carry him down, then we can get on with things. Come. Because these dogs are very specially trained. One word of command. That's it. Just Major, come. That's it. You only have to say it to once. <laughs> come, and you're there. Come. 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 Gonna have to see if we can come. It's a good. This is good, isn't it? Come. <laughs> Boy, come, stay here, stay here, come around. <laughs> come here. Oi! Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come. come. It strikes me as probably being very demanding in bed, that woman. <laughs> I don't know, it's just an impression I'm getting. Come, come, come. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Wound up with stuff all over her face. <laughs> no, it's the stuff there, and I've made the lock weird. God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Choking slightly, unfortunately. <laughs> right. <laughs> they have to lift him up, I think. Put him over the hole, and then I'm going to have to. He's alright, he won't bite you. Boy. He's all right, he won't bite ya. What the hell kind of use is he ever going to be as a police dog then? Stop! Stop right there or I'll send the dog in. It's all right, he won't bite ya. <laughs> yeah, come get me dog down. Major. Major, 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 come on. Unless I pick him up and drop him down, if somebody pick him up? Yeah, that might be better. <coughs> <coughs> You've ruined me dog for life. <laughs> Come here. Look, Major, the policeman knows how to get down the ladder. Come round. Excuse me, can I just get my... Come round. Here, here. Come here now. Come. Come. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
I wouldn't R too much because in a minute he leaps up and rips that guy's throat out. <laughs> so, a very funny piece of television. <laughs> now we can do. <laughs> do you want an answer to that? Right. Keep, keep your legs. Yeah. Trust me. Oh, I'm a policeman. <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. Hold on there, and I'll hold you. And we'll all go down together. Ready? You <laughs> no, can't step up. Ready? <laughs> right, if you can come up between me and lock your legs. <laughs> it's got a certificate on it, this thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again. Uh, I can't see where you blow. Where do you want me to jug? I'm not sure, really. Between her legs. That's in my head. Yeah. Right, if I can drop him so ass down, you can catch it somehow. Because <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't fart. I promise I won't fart? <laughs> Is that in the good charter thing now for the police? Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. Come on. Good lad. Come on, come on. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy, steady. Put your feet on there. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Good. Got him? Yeah, go. Got him? Good boy. You want to be a dog wolf, sir? So, the basic, the basic lesson we learned here is if you ever rob a bank, mugs, or anything you do like that and you get chased by the dogs, just any ladder. <laughs> Any bit of scaffolded and, and, and you're there. Actually, I, that's reminded me, I've got to go because I've got to go and release some dogs from my loft. <laughs> that's no way to talk about Nolan's sisters at all, isn't it? <laughs> I've got to go, I'll see you later. Cheers. Leg it. Come on, Major. Come on, boy. Come on, seize me, Ma Major. <laughs> you got it, Major. Just chase him. <laughs> Come, on, Major. Come, on, sir. <laughs>